Hi, welcome to the Armature 9 family of products. My name is Paul Siegel, and I am the designer and the maker of these figures. And I thought I'd put together a video to give you kind of an overview of what this is all about. I won't go too much into the backstory other than to say that I've been working on these since 2012. So this is gonna be my ninth year of uh, iterating and uh, manufacturing these these products and uh, if you want to learn more about it I encourage you to visit the website blog or uh, other videos on this YouTube channel there is a playlist tab that you can click on and you can see the videos organized by category you can see some behind the scenes stuff there um, look at some previous announcements and things of that sort and uh, get a feel for the the journey that that I, I've been through with this product so fundamentally what the A9 rigs are is a collection of skeletal figures that are realistically proportioned to very common proportional archetypes, so to speak. So for example, uh, the human uh, body and its proportions is accurately reflected in the biped figures which is currently all that's available on the website. But I will be bringing back some of the other figures like the quadrupeds. And here you can see a quadruped that's made to look like a cat, so a feline. But here's a larger version of the quadruped uh, made to look like a horse. And so there's two, uh, primarily just two different uh, sizes that I've been developing over the years. I'm currently working on a half scale figure. Uh, I ran into some roadblocks with that, so I'm kind of at a standstill, but I'm hoping to have a version of Ranger that is half as tall as, as a real person. And then if I can accomplish that, I'd like to do a one-to-one -one scale. Um, but for now, I've got two scales. I've got the 112 scale, so this is Rider, and the 16 scale. 1 6 scale and 1 12 scale are uh, standards, uh, are standard conventions for the doll industry. And the reason I picked those dimensions is because there's already an enormous amount of accessories, vehicles, props, weapons, and all sorts of things that you can find online uh, for, for this particular uh, size factor. And so if you want to get costumes and have reference for folds or props so that you can really get the right angle for a particular item, a weapon, you can go online and search 1 6 scale props or 1 12 scale props and you'll find uh, countless stuff online. Um, and, it's, and, it, and it's actually a lot of fun to, to get items and uh, accessorize your figure. It really just adds a lot of life, a lot of life to the figure. But fundamentally, I designed these to be very skeletal so that they only represent the proportionality and, and they don't interfere with the design or the anatomy that you perhaps want to portray with the figure. So this could be a really skinny person or it could be a person that has a lot of volume. It could be male, it could be female. When I initially designed the Ranger and Rider, I designed them to be gender agnostic. And so uh, the pelvis clips are designed so that you can uh, kind of swivel them and change the, the distance between the hips. So if you want to have a more feminine hip placement or a more masculine hip placement, you can just swivel those, those uh, clips out and in. Uh, that said, I do have a two figures uh, that in this size, in the one six scale size, called Ranger XX and Ranger XY, that represent more accurately the male and female proportion. So you can see how the female is slightly shorter than the male, and the back is slightly narrower uh, than the male as well. And the Ranger Classic is actually a little taller than the two of them, um, the Rangers, because they're larger and heavier, they have this cool uh, spring system on the ankles, which looks kind of neat. And what that does is it puts pressure 
on the, the ball joint so that they are more likely to hold their pose even if the character is, is at an angle. So even though it is a heavier figure, um, it does a pretty good job of holding uh, the poses and uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty stable. Uh, oh, the other difference between this particular one, this is the classic ranger and the ones I showed you before, the XY and XX were the gendered rangers. So this one is completely gender agnostic and it's also been sort of lobotomized. It has, <laughs> has no uh, personality or brain uh, because the top of the head is flat like the old rangers were at the very beginning when I first came out with the product, except this time uh, it's got a magnet on the top. So if you wanted to do headstands with, with this guy, it would be much easier to do it. Um, not only because it's flat, but the magnet of course adds a little bit extra stability to it. So. Uh, everything has magnets on the feet and on the hands, so you can easily do things like handstands or uh, footstands with with one foot. Um, it, they're really a lot of fun to to pose with. They're designed to be very modular. So, in fact, I should show you uh, what Rider looks like when when you get it in the mail. When you purchase Rider, it comes with the torso and the limbs in separate bags. And all you have to do, I do this for the riders because it prevents the figure from arriving all sort of mangled up. Uh, the, the rangers are more sturdy and they're also a little bit more uh, firm and difficult to, to you know, take apart and put on, back together. So these arrive fully intact. But for the riders, everything is mostly assembled. You just have to take the limbs and snap them onto the right spot. Hopefully it's, it's obvious which side is which. One of the things I like about the rider design is that the, the femurs have a slight curve uh, inward to be a little bit more anatomically accurate to, this, to the way that our skeleton looks, or at least the way I like drawing the skeleton. And uh, it comes with articulated hands, but it also comes with a couple of these hands, these block shaped hands which are more proportionally accurate. Um, I couldn't quite get all of this articulation at a scale that was proper for 112 and so it, proportionally that is the only downside of this figure is that the hands are much larger than they really should be and that's simply a limitation of uh, my manufacturing capabilities. I couldn't get the articulation to work at a smaller scale. But if the bag comes with a couple of the block shaped hands. If you don't care much for the articulation, you'd rather have proportionality. You can just pull these off and put those in. It's um, a simple ball and socket connection. But like I mentioned, all the pieces are built to be modular. So I sell different lengths of arms, different lengths of legs, so that you can essentially customize your own figure. Both of the figures now come with a stand that is especially designed for the figure. So the larger figures, the rangers, come with this really nice sturdy metal stand. It's composed of three pieces, a clip, a gooseneck, and a ball head at the end for tiny adjustments. So if you want to swivel the character or just tiny sh shifts in, in angle, you can use that. It's really handy. And um, also, as of not that long ago, maybe a couple months ago, you can now buy additional goosenecks and extend it. So I had this custom designed so that you could buy just the gooseneck extension in the accessories page and screw it onto the end of this and get even more length with it. 
Uh, that way, if you're trying to do some photography and you kind of want this to be out of the way, you could clip it off to the side and have the gooseneck sort of coming into the frame. Um, and uh, it just gives you more control over the staging. But uh, I find this just also gives you more control in general if you want to have the thing completely flip upside down for example it'd be much easier with a longer longer gooseneck now because this one is made of steel it's heavier and so the longer you go the harder it is for it to be stable or to hold its own weight the riders come with a brand new stand that i ha also had custom custom built and uh, the beauty of this one is that it's really light weight and it comes with a magnet so here's a magnet and it, it'll snap magnetically magnetically to the to the bottom of this because the entire core is made of metal and so let me actually let me pull this out here and show you what you need to make sure of is so, sometimes uh, you'll see the metal sort of protruding out I tend to kind of go like this to get this nice silicone to covering the metal fully and then I just uh, screw it into the adapter on the back of the figure. All the figures come with a standard one quarter inch screw adapter. It's the same insert that you see in most cameras. So if you have a tripod, you can actually use a tripod to hold your character in place. But uh, the stands obviously work work really well. And the beauty of this is it's really lightweight and you can make really tiny micro adjustments to it. And Ryder, the reason I called Ryder Ryder is because you can take him along with you. You can easily fit him in a pencil pouch and him or her and take take the figure with you. And now you have a stand that you can also just wrap up nicely. And it's really lightweight and compact. Now what I usually do is I super glue this onto the bottom. So I am including some super glue in with your purchase of your rider and a platform. Now the platform comes included with all the figures, whichever figure your purchase comes with the platform. Let me show you how well, how well this works actually. I've got one here that has already glue in it. Now there you can see how the the wire tends to ride up a little bit. I'm going to push that nice silicone up and just twist this into the back of rider. And then you can just attach that to your platform and proceed to pose it any way that you like. And you can see how, how nicely it moves. You can make these tiny micro changes and even flip the entire figure figure around. It's just a thing of beauty. Now if you push it too far forward then it's going to take the, the weight of the platform with it. So you could put something with weight onto the platform or you could get this larger platform here and that way it's not going to go, go anywhere. It's coated in this uh, really nice silicone that is exactly the chroma green color. So I had it match exactly that Pantone color so that if you were to use a green screen and you place this in front of the green screen, the color would be practically identical. Um, like I said, it's uh, mine is super glued. And the reason I'm not gluing yours when I send it to you is because I want to give you the option of either gluing it or using a different system. The bottom of this stand has a screw and I, I will be making these screws available in the accessories page in the event you'd like to just create your own mounting system. So if you want to have like a platform made of wood and you want to drill a hole through it and then run a screw through the, the wood platform and attach this to it, you could do that. So if you're doing stop motion animation and you want to just create your own custom stage setup, uh, you can use the threads that are in here to screw it into whatever system you want to build. I've been using this and it's been working great. So I just super glued the magnet to the bottom and it's been a lot of fun uh, to work to work with it that way. So yeah, so whether you get the large or the small figure, 
They each come with their own stand. They each come with their own platform. They're each built of modular pieces, pieces that come on and off. The riders are easier to do that with. Uh, the larger figures take a little bit more time and care and effort. I have videos on, on all that stuff here on this channel. So feel free to navigate and learn more about the figures. One of the fun things that you can do is you can go to armaturelab.com and you can find options for different head types. So if you wanted to just buy a Ranger and put a completely different head size on it or head shape on it like this big cartoony head or something that looks like a realistic skull, you can easily do that. I have videos on how to swap heads on these figures. And I guess the other thing I should mention is when I originally designed these, I designed them with the intention of being used for sculptural studies. That's why I call them armatures. And so and that's also why I kept the limbs fairly thin so they wouldn't protrude out of the clay. So if you want to sculpt over them, you know, having this skull is, would be fun for an ecroche, for example. It gives you a little bit more accurate placement for anatomical landmarks. Uh, you can do that. What you wouldn't want to do is bake the figure because they're partially made of plastic. And so even though these mat this material is a wood composite material, it's a combination of wood, flour, and PLA or a corn-based plastic. And so if you were to put it in an oven, it would just melt and deform rather than burn. So it's not something that's really suited for that kind of sculpture work, but if you wanted to sculpt over it as a study or for some claymation and then take the sculpture off and put some different, uh, different sculpture on it, you can do, I have a video specifically on how to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Right now the storefront only has the, the bipeds but I will be bringing back some of the more uh, fantasy-like uh, characters like the Digitigrades and the dragons and the horses and the felines and the canines. This is a actually a one-to-one -one scale bullfrog, but I took the head off and put a different head on it. The, the small figures are compatible with the small figures and the large figures are compatible with the large figures. But there are some cool things that you can do uh, where you cross over. Uh, where is that? So the, uh, the biggest ball joint in the small figures is the exact same size and shape as the smallest ball joint in the bigger figures. So if you really want to get creative, you could figure out ways of combining both sets of pieces to create really unusual looking things. Like you could take, you could actually take this entire top portion of the rider and put one of these clips on the pelvis and have a tiny little upper torso combined with the lower body of the ranger figures. One of the things that I'm hoping to do uh, moving forward is come up with a library of pieces that bridge between both figures. So for example, have a, a big to small uh, ball socket coupler so that you could take the heads that are designed for the smaller figures and attach them to the bigger figures or vice versa. So that's something that's on my mind, something that I want to do and, and develop at some point, but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, the, the figures have come a long way. I'm still trying to make them better uh, any chance I get. Uh, but I, knew, I, I know that um, there are issues sometimes with uh, pieces breaking or becoming unusable. And so I do make sure that these come with a lifetime warranty, the big ones do and the small figures come with a one year warranty so that if anything happens to be defective or doesn't, doesn't work well, you can let me know and I can get you some replacement pieces because that's important to me. It's important that, that you have a good experience with the product. The glue actually is, comes in handy for tightening joints. So if things do get loose on you or if they're at, at a point where 
it's um, too loose for you to do what you need to do with it, then I have videos on how to tighten joints as well. Um, any sort of liquid super glue will work. I would suggest staying away from gel super glue. So it's got to be liquidy so that it coats your joint really smoothly. And you can kind of almost rely on surface tension just to create a nice coating over a joint and it'll make it even tighter than it was when it was new. So if you have any questions about any of that, just leave it in the comments and I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thanks for checking out Armature 9 and I hope that you'll purchase one of these products. Thank you. Bye.